I'm Brother Yusito L, and I'm one of the producers on the Ringing Stone Network, and I'd like to welcome you to the Ringing Stone Network and welcome you to one of our very highly anticipated shows with sex energy goddess Mahi Torres, um, a.k.a. Seg13. Um, goddess, welcome to the network. Uh, this is our one-year anniversary weekend. So we appreciate it, and I'm so happy it fell on your particular day. So, family, I give you Sister Mahi Torres, Sex Goddess, Sex 13. Peace and love. Thank you so much, Yusiko, and thank you so much, Reading Stone Network. Happy anniversary. I am very happy to be here on this day of anniversary sharing this information because, um, you know, I'm here once a month. Last month we were getting into Oregon Energy and what that is, which is a – Oh, hold on a second, my I'm I'm on the network myself too. So, um and talking about Oregon energy and how that is sexual creative energy and this month I'm focusing more on sex, the actual sexual energy, the physical aspect of sex that we all know and love. Um, but so few of us have the pro- proper information on what it is and how it really plays out in our lives because we live in a society where it has been completely hidden from us, the true meaning of sex and sacred sexuality. And we are led to believe that this is just something that we do. It's, it's, it's part of nature, so we just do it. And that has some truth to it because sex is something that every single individual has in common. Everything that has life has been derived through sex. And it's something that remains in this in this realm forever and ever and ever. It is creation. That's what it is. And that's exactly what it is, taking it right down to the very literal term of what sex is. It's creative energy. And we have this energy that's brewing in us 24 hours a day all the time. And it's constantly creating our reality. And most people don't know that. They don't, they don't think about sexual energy being something that lives in them, something that creates their life. So as we're learning about chakras and we're learning about our bodies and we're learning about self-healing, this is the number one thing that definitely needs to be addressed because sex affects our root chakra, our sacral chakra, and our sex chakra. And these chakras are instrumental in the development of all people. So there are different levels of sexual energy and different aspects of sex in nature and sexuality, and all of those things have been hidden from us. The only thing that we've been exposed to is the physical aspect of sex, having sex, being physical, doing it, um, all the, the, the sensuality and the and you know, all of the pleasure that comes with it, people very seldom talk about the rituals and the sacred act and what it means. In order for us to create anything, sex is needed. It is necessary. And what happens when a person is having sex, whether they're being physical with it or whether they're just existing, energy is being created through the process of sexual energy in the body. And so when you have physical sex, that energy is amplified and you accelerate the the creativity, you accelerate creation. When you are not doing it, when you are not in the physical act of sex, there's still some things happening. You're still creating. And so this awareness is making people more, um, is making people pay a little more attention to what's really going on with sex because we're looking at society right now and sex is all over the place. We're constantly getting bombarded with visuals of sex, with um, images, with uh, encounters, all of that is, is constantly happening everywhere. And it, it desensitizes us in a way. And there's people that are, you know, you, you can never get enough of what this is, of this sexual energy, of this sexual act. And it's really tricky because we get fooled by the fact that it feels so good, you know, and, and that it seems right because, again, it's natural. 
But what's happening when we are engaging with other people or when we're engaging in sexual activity and we're not conscious of who we are, we're creating from our subconscious. So everything that's happening in our lives is manifested through that sexual creative energy that comes through our bodies every single day. And for those of us that are having actual sexual relations, you're doing what's called sex magic. You are creating through that energy. And this is something that is happening with every single individual. You don't have to know any particular rituals for this thing to be taking effect in your life. So today we want to get down to what the root of it is. I want to touch on a subject that most people put under the rug, put it in the closet, don't really talk about it, and that's sexual abuse. And sexual abuse is very important to address when we're healing our root, sacral, and sex chakra because that's where it all begins. And sexual abuse, um, people, they think that sexual abuse is only about physical, the physical act, act, being raped, being molested, those things that happen physically. But sexual abuse goes so much deeper than just the touch. Sexual abuse is psychological, and it's something that we can also put upon ourselves. You can sexually abuse yourself. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to get into that a little bit. But going back on just what sexual abuse is, let's clarify that sexual abuse is anything that that is presented in your life that is making you act upon something that you're not ready to act upon. You know, so, or that sends a trigger. So let's say, for example, a young person, and I mean, it really depends on, when when I'm saying young, it's not even more so as young in physical age, but a person that is young in the mind and is, not, and, and is not ready to receive these experiences. But let's go ahead and put an age on it. Somebody that's like eight years old, and they're seeing sexual images, and they're constantly being introduced to sexuality and sexual images, but they're being introduced to it without being spoken to about it. They're seeing things, you know, whether it be a commercial or whether it be something on the computer or all of a sudden they see, you know, um, people acting um, in a sexual way. This is going to start triggering some things in that individual. And it's not always spoken about because sex is taboo, right? We don't talk about sex. It's something that you're only supposed to do if you're married. You're only supposed to do it if you have a significant other. This is not something that you really engage in. And then if you're young, you're just not supposed to look at it at all. So what happens? They sneak. People sneak. Children sneak. And so they start acting upon these feelings. And that is the beginning of, you know, that's the opening of Pandora's box. Because once you start connecting to the physical aspect of what sex is, you awaken something inside that can never be put back to sleep. Even if it's affects you in a way to where you no longer even want to address or um, talk about sex or engage in it, it's still affecting you because sex is a natural part of being. It's a natural part of who we are. And it's so important that we address it in a healthy manner, that we have a healthy perspective, uh, a, a, a truth of what sex is. And unfortunately, that's not something that we have. The thing is that people are waking up to the truth. We are in the age of apocalypse, as I always say. And so it's the age of revelation, the truth, information is being revealed. And so now people have access to this truth. When we talk about um, sexual abuse and and self-sexual abuse, that also stems from early images and early introduction to sex. Um, people start to feel like, this defines them, this defines them, and this is a power that absolutely everyone has access to. And when you have access to that power and you can do things with it covertly, silently, in the, in the you know, hiding it, um, a lot of things seep through that you can't really do anything about until you have the, the capacity to really recognize what it is, what's happening, and what's going on. Um, there's also a lot of men that don't recognize sexual abuse because they're men, they feel like, oh, you know, that it's not a big deal. I'm a man. This is what's supposed to happen. Because in young men, sex is introduced like 
oh, it's it's okay for you to do it because you're the man. You're the, you know, it, it's a good thing. You know, when, when you have young women and young men, the woman is supposed to um, be virgin forever until she's married. And, you know, for a woman, it's something that you don't really do. Nobody really wants to be with a woman that has a lot of, that has had a lot of sexual partners. But for a man, it's okay, and that's just how society has designed it. But the fact is that it's not okay, and that both men and women still experiences levels of sexual abuse through the acts of sex and being introduced to sex prematurely. And when it happens to a man, you know, he's even more afraid to speak up. You know, I've I've talked to men where they have had issues with aunts or cousins or people that have come into their life to introduce them to the act of sex, and, you know, they never speak on it, or they feel it, it takes them a really long time to recognize that that is sexual abuse. Anything that is altering your way of of uh, development that is um, creating fear or creating anxiety or creating an addiction, um, those things are abusive. And people begin to, you know, when they have these experiences, one of the ways that a lot of people abuse themselves is by masturbation. And we also live in a society where, oh, masturbation is cool and it's natural and you should know what your body does. You shouldn't feel bad about touching on yourself. And all of that is great. Exploration is wonderful. But it all has to be in the right context. And when a person is masturbating constantly and they're not aware of what it is that they're doing, they're creating parasites, they're creating demons, they're creating energies within themselves that's only going to create more of that, you know? So when you're masturbating and you're experiencing orgasm, that orgasm is like um, it's, it's, it's like this magic power that creates things, and it'll create whatever is existing in your subconscious. So if you're a person that has been abused, and you begin to masturbate, and that's something that you're continuously doing, you're attracting more energy of abuse because that's the way that you were introduced to it, so that is what your mind conceptualizes, and that's what you start to act upon. And so then you start attracting experiences into your life that will cause more encounters or more sexual abuse or more destructive and, and disruptive behavior within yourself, um, low self-esteem, um, displaced power. Because sex is very powerful, and a lot of people um, use that. When they're abused by it, they begin to use it because it was the very thing that, um, you know, that they were abused with. Um, In my personal story, sexual abuse came into my life when I was young at the age of eight, and I grew up with this whole uh, mentality. You know, I knew that sex was power because when somebody does something to you and takes something away from you um, because of this sex, you recognize that it's a very powerful thing that makes people do really awful things, really crazy things. It makes them act outside of themselves. And so when that happens, you start creating a whole perception of yourself and of sex and sexuality in your own mind. And so in my mind, the case was that I wanted to use that power, and I wanted to use that power to get back at the, at my offenders. And so I developed this appetite for sex, but I didn't want to, I I wanted to be in control all the time. And I thought that that was a good time at the mindset where I was at the time. This was in a space where, you know, at this point, I'm a teenager. I don't know. I I haven't talked to anybody about the things that have happened in my life. This is just me dealing with my own demons, so to speak. And so, you know, I would have an encounter and I would have to be completely in control of it. And I never really got any satisfaction, any physical satisfaction out of the encounter. It was like um, during that time, it was like my mind was just on revenge. And I was feeling that by um, being in control of that situation, that I was getting revenge over my abusers. And so this is something that, you know, we talk about it now, we look at it now, and it's absolutely insane, right, that you that one would think that. But where I was at that time in my life, that's exactly where I was, and I felt empowered by using my sexuality in that way. And that that energy and those actions continued to bring more abusive situations into my life. You know, and, and most of the situations were caused by my own self-neglect or my own thoughts or my ideas of myself. And because it's not something that you consciously know, you can go your whole lifetime and not know that your 
the way that your life has transpired has started when you were first introduced to sex, to the sexual energy, to the sexual power. So this is something that in order for anyone to heal from this, they have to go down to the root. One of the things that I had to do was go deep into the root of who I am and figure out what what happened, what was it that was going on. And I believe I went into it a little bit in um, one of the shows that I've done here before when we were talking about the organ. But um, when it comes to sexual abuse and healing the root, sacral, and sex chakra, you have to go back to that closet and you got to pull out everything that's in there and you have to find forgiveness for yourself. And when you find that forgiveness for yourself, you're able to forgive those that have caused you harm, those that have damaged you. But that's just like the first level. That's like the first part because once you practice that forgiveness, then more things are going to come up. And in my situation, what came up was the realization that I've had this sexual energy, not just from this lifetime, but from past lifetimes. And sex is such a strong and intense power that you can carry it lifetime after lifetime until you have redeemed yourself from it, until you have um, uh, unlocked it, until you have uh, remedied it, until you have healed it. It'll continue to happen lifetime after lifetime. And so this is time now where we are now. This is a, an opportunity that we have to absolutely heal everything within us and release ourselves from the binds of um, the sexual secrets and the things that the abuse and all of the things that have happened in that in that part of our energy. So in my life, I learned to embrace the situations that happened because I recognized that the energy that I was carrying was the energy that was beyond me. And so this energy and the things that happened needed to happen in order for me to recognize who I am and so that I could get back my power, so that I could comprehend what this energy is. It was through the things that happened in my life that made me so curious and made me, you know, want to learn more about this sexual energy and what it is and why it makes people behave in the way that it does. And one of the things that I discovered was that because it's such a great power and because it's so hidden, there's an agenda. There's a reason why it's hidden. You know, when people don't know what their power is, when they don't know who they are, they can easily be controlled by anything outside of themselves. And so this is a I'm not going to say it's a conspiracy theory. It is a conspiracy. The reason why we see so much sex, the reason why the world is, is desensitized when it comes to sex, but still completely being uh, sex all the time, is because it is, a, is, it is a means for the powers that be to get us to self-destruct. They desensitize, they abuse, they um, program, and then there's no solutions because they're not, it's, it's never really addressed. So this causes for people to implode, you know, and they're not able to pinpoint what it is that's going on in their lives because they're thinking, oh, it's my job or, oh, it's the person that I married or, oh, it's this situation, and they're not going down to the root of what the issue is. And the issue always is about sex. It is always about sex. Even if you have something that is not, um, that doesn't seem to coincide with the sexual nature, when you go deep into your sexuality, your thoughts of sex, and your experiences with it, you're going to find some clues that tell you it had to do with your perception of it and how you developed through sex. And, you know, there's people that feel that, well, I was never touched, so I was never this or that, so I wasn't to that root. And you really start focusing on sex and sexuality, you're going to know that you have been some way, somehow affected by this energy. And if you feel that you haven't, well, then it's important for you to um, to create balance within yourself so that you don't have the issues that you believe that you're having that um, have nothing to do with sex in your mind. So um, that's why this is a topic that it's really never ending. It's so vast because there's so many different levels of it. And the first thing that I recommend to anyone is just to be with yourself and start writing down what your thoughts are when it comes to this sacred sexual act. Speaking of sacredness, sex, there was a time when sex was used by communities of people, a lot of times elite groups of people, and it's still being done till this day, to manifesting, 
to um, to join powers with people, to create empires. And so sex was something that was very, it was like it was scientific because you couldn't be with a, with just a regular female and a regular guy and, and produce amazing things. That wasn't, that wasn't the science right there. That was not the key. They were sex goddesses and sex gods were sought out specifically for the purpose of creating. And they had to have um, an awareness of themselves and their power. They had to have their chakras open. They had to be aware of their chakras. They had to be aware of, you know, what exists within them in order for them to put something forth and create. And there has to be, or there had to be the chemistry of both individuals to, to make that happen, whether it's sexual attraction, whether it's sexual awareness. And a lot of times it wasn't, you know, sexual attraction is secondary to what the science was. If you had all of the elements that were necessary to create, um, then that's what was going to happen. If you had all of the uh, the specific things, like you had um, an open mind and you had uh, powerful intentions and you had your self-awareness, and those are good things to put people together to, to procreate. And so in these societies, that is what they did. And it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was, um, you know, it, it was nothing like it is today. It had nothing to do with, with a person, with people being, a couple, you know, it doesn't, this wasn't work that was only um, for people that were in relationship. You know, sex was a tool. It was something that was used to procreate and to procreate not just life, not just, um, you know, people, but to procreate situations, to procreate things, to procreate um, anything that you wanted to manifest or intend. It was done through sex. And because of this power, and, you know, they knew that if everybody knew this power, then we wouldn't be able to have any control over people. Because ultimately what these powers that be want is control over people. And so what better way to take away um, control than to take away their their memory and to, you know, keep them from the truth about themselves. And that's where the sex exploitation all became, it, it was part of a plan to keep people asleep or to have them ignorant of themselves. And so as time went on, as media developed, and as all of these powers came more into power, the secrets kind of dug in a little bit deeper, and they were more difficult to find. But again, I say we're in a time where all of that is being revealed, so we're able to now dig up this information and learn about it and use it within our own lives for our own benefit. And so self-healing Sexual energy and sex is a tremendous part of self-healing, and you cannot self-heal if you not if you do not address those issues first. I want to um, take a break real quick and just take this time to give out the number in case anyone has any questions. We are going to be opening up the lines in a little bit. Six four six nine two nine zero six nine one um because I know a lot of you have questions in regards to this topic, and I have a lot of things that I want to cover. but before I go on into the next segment of what I want to introduce to you, if anybody has any questions in regards to sexual abuse, if you feel that you have been um, sexually abused and have not been able to identify it, um if there's anything that you want to share in regards to that then you're welcome to give me a call at 646-929-0691. Yeah, I, I made a quick decision to go ahead and take calls before I get into the next section so that we don't have a lot of um, a lot of confusion. And those of you that may have questions in this segment, in this portion of the broadcast that, you know, can do it so that while it's still on your mind. Um, Usiku, do we have anybody that is interested in making a comment or have a question? Okay, I'm going to assume that that is a no. So I'm going to give you an exercise that you can do with your first part of healing your root, sacral, and sexual chakras. And um, and, uh, let's see, were you there? I thought I heard a little echo, but maybe that's just my phone. Okay. 
So um, the exercise that I always introduce is meditation. Meditation is very important to the process of healing. So it's very important that you meditate. But beyond the meditation, what you want to do when it comes to healing your root, sexual, and sacral chakra, you want to ask the question of what is going on within you. What are your thoughts? What is you know, what happened to you? If you don't have any recollection of anything that happened to you sexually, just ask. And when when you're asking who you're talking to is most high, the all that knows everything, that can connect you with all of the information that you need at any time. So although it may seem silly that you're like, oh, well, what happened? Kind of like you're talking to yourself. It is what you must do. But taking a, a, um, a further step is to write about it and ask those questions on paper, ask on a piece of paper, ask a question, whatever it is that you want to know. If you have had um, sexual abuse that has been outright, you know, blatant and it's not hidden in the depths of your soul, it's something that you can definitely identify with, it's important for you to stick with that information and forgive yourself for those situations that happen or that situation that happened. And that's going to make it easier for you to forgive the person that abused you. Forgiveness is an integral part of this healing because without forgiveness, you're not going to be able to move past anything. It's important for you to be in the now, and it's important for you to recognize where you are in your life at this point. And going back, not being afraid of going back, not being afraid of living that experience, reliving that experience in your mind because you're reliving it subconsciously all the time. So the moment that you begin to address it and you begin to take it out of the closet, you're going to start to feel some relief. And this, you don't have to tell anybody. You don't have to share this with anybody. Um, the work is with yourself. You yourself in most high, and it's always going to reveal what it is that you need to do next. So once you write uh, these things down on a piece of paper and, you know, you release it, release the expectation of anything coming right away. You want to know and be patient with yourself that you are in the process of your own self-healing and that it's going to take time and it's going to be all in divine time. So don't rush yourself to feeling um, healed or to feeling like, okay, I, I got it out and I said it and I confronted it, but I still feel awful or I still don't feel complete. You want to give yourself some time to, um, you know, to heal from this situation and to let these feelings kind of come to the top because that's what will happen. As soon as you start digging into it, then other things are going to come up. You're going to have other questions and other realities and other, um, uh, what is it, things that you didn't know, and, and all of a sudden they come up with the word I'm looking for, um, not an epiphany, but an awareness, an awareness that you didn't have before. You, you're going to start becoming more aware of what's in there because when you do this process, when you begin this process, what's happening is you're, you're telling most High, I'm ready for my healing, and you're taking action by writing, by asking, by being present in this in this healing session, in this, you know, you're conscious of what's going on, so you're opening up yourself for the solution, for the healing. So um, I'm going to move on to the next aspect of sex that I wanted to touch on. And it's still, everything goes back to the sexual abuse at some level. Um, but what I want to talk about next is as adults, the sexual relationships that we have with other people or the way that we use sex, um, the things that, you know, how we use that power. Because in my situation, I had to use that power because I wanted to feel, you know, I wanted to feel empowered. You know, something was taken from me and I was mad about it. And so I was using sex to, to redeem myself from that, you know. And so it took me a long time to recognize that that's what I was doing. And it took me a long time to really face the truth of the things that have occurred in my life and, you know, to, to kind of like put it all in place and know that one thing, it was like a domino effect. So one thing affected other things. But as adults, we feel that, you know, we're, we're good. I'm an adult. I made it this far, far. You know, I got it all under control. And the things that happened to me, oh, everybody goes through certain things. And we kind of play it off like, you know, these are just things that happen. But when we recognize that we have suffered a level of abuse when it comes to sex, we're able to kind of like put things into place and know that, you know, every cause has an effect and the causes of sex in our lives have these effects that we, you know, turn into relationship battles, turn into 
promiscuity turn into, you know, whatever it is. And the first one that I want to address is the promiscuity because that's one that happens. Um, it, it happens a lot when it comes to sexual abuse because we're not aware of the sacredness of this act. And, um, you know, it was, we were abused. And so we continue that cycle of abuse and it goes into our relationships and not just our relationship, our sexual relationships. It, this goes into relationships with the world, relationships with things, with other people. And so when we're not healed, and we are adults and we're continuing in this process of sexual activity, then we are still creating more of the abuse. We're still creating more of those situations coming into our lives um, through our relationships. So um, sex and women. Women have a, a huge control of sex because for a time, and I'm saying for a time because things have changed quite a bit, so for a time, we were the ones in control of it, and we were the ones who decided. And so we had a lot of control where men, they would do what we wanted them to do, what we needed them to do. And it's, it's still, you know, like that a lot to this time, but it's just not as much as it was. You know, women have truly lost themselves in this control and have completely abused it and have made themselves uh, really easy to be manipulated in order to, you know, to give up the sex. So when women use sex for money, that is a form of sexual abuse, no matter how healed the person thinks that they are, no matter how grounded they feel that they are, when they're allowing uh, um, a person, a being, to enter their vessel and they don't know who that person is, they're not, um, that person is not healed, that person is not balanced, then the person that is engaging in the sex, that is selling the sex, they're they're sacrificing themselves and they're bringing in all of that energy, all of those parasites, all of that, all of the demons into their bodies. And so they can fool themselves and trick themselves into thinking, no, I'm good. I'm just a strong woman and this is just what I do and it has nothing to do with anything else. I, you know, I got to make my money. I got to, you know, so there's always a reason for the abuse, but the abuse still exists. They can paint it and sugarcoat it and call it all kinds of things, but it still exists and it still continues to create more of it. Men are also part of this cycle of abuse because, you know, when a man is paying for for sex, that says a lot about himself as well. So it's not just the women. We're just affected in different ways and we use it in different ways. Um, I'm the Sex Energy Goddess 13, SCG 13. I am on the Ringing Stone Network on this Friday, the anniversary, the first year anniversary of the, net, of the network, and we're talking about sexual energy and sex power. I finished off on the last segment. I was talking about prostitution, sexual abuse, 
um, using sex to heal. Uh, and I want to move on over to the next segment of my conversation this evening. But before I move on, I do want to open up the lines for anyone that has any questions in regards to sexual abuse, in regards to the topic that we're uh, talking about tonight. 646-929-0691 is the number to dial. If you're on the line, just press number one to raise your hand, and we will see you on there, and we'll let you in on the line. JL, is there anyone that has risen their hand that wants to speak? Peace. I'm there. I, I would love to ask a question. You know, okay. And I'm family. I'm your sequel. Will. Do do y'all paint sex bad and make it something that because of the culture you grow you grew up in, it's a bad thing? You know, because I, I had this discussion a long time ago with a female. And she proved to me that it was kind of cultural because in Alaska, it used to be a tradition that if a male came in from out of town, the man at home would give his wife to him. But it wasn't like a sin. So is it that because of the culture we go up into where it's monogamous, then we, we're painted all these evil things that come along with it? or is it? Absolutely. I mean, sex is not... A sex is not a sin, and sex is not bad. It's what people have done with it and have abused the power that makes it bad. And, yeah, culturally we all have a different ideas and different perceptions of what sex is or what it should be. So it really depends upon the individuals and the individuals that are engaged upon it. I think that um, it becomes abusive when when there are things that are hidden, when things are not really exposed for what they are, when people are being used, um, then it becomes something negative. But, you know, to say uh, sex is bad or that sex is a sin, I think that that would not be fair to say that because sex is a powerful creative force that we all have access to. And just like anything else, it can be abused, and unfortunately people do abuse that. You know, it's like it's just like now people are talking more about polygamy and, you know, different things like that. And all of those things are cool if the people that are involved in it decide, you know, choose to go with it. If that's something that they all agree upon, then who is anyone else to say that that's bad or that's a sin or that they're going to go to hell for having sex? It's it's really not about the act itself. It's what people uh, do for it or what they do because of it that can make it so-called bad or good. So would prostitution be bad, or are we saying that it's your mental um, imagery prior to sex that makes it something where something negative comes out of it? Well, that that definitely depends on the individual, because I would say that I don't personally think that prostitution is bad. I think that if a person wants to sell their body and that's what they're choosing to do and they feel good about it and, you know, they're happy with themselves, then, hey, that's great. But unfortunately in the society that we live in now, people go into prostitution because of desperation or because of abuse or because they feel, you know, their low self-esteem. They feel that that's all that they have to offer. And so those are the things that make it a negative situation. But if somebody has, um, you know, they're aware of what they're doing, like like I was saying before, back in, in ancient times when people used to do these sacred sexual rituals to create, they were they were not, maybe they weren't exchanging money, but they were exchanging energy, they were exchanging power, and there was an agreement to do it. And so it was, it was in balance. You know, when things are out of balance, that's when it becomes wrong. That's when it becomes bad, when it starts affecting the individual. So um, to say prostitution itself is wrong, I can't say that. I just can say that it is not a healthy profession because a lot of people have lost the, um, you know, the, the knowledge of what it actually is and what it is that they're doing with it. And they're using it really for the wrong reason. They're not doing it like, you know, like it was done in sacred times. It's not the same thing as it once was. If we can come back to that, and we can come back to people being clear on what it is and being aware of what happens when you engage in sexual activity, then we have a better chance of bringing it back to balance. But the way that it is right now, it's uh, it's not, not so good. 
So are you saying that because we use it now for re- recreation opposed to procreation is bad? Or do you believe that there is a um, – can we have a recreational sex? You can have a recreational sex, but it's – where and I come from and what I believe people is people just like, got to relieve pressure. You know, and it's like if you have pressure, you relieve it, right? But the, mm-hmm. are, is it negative because you relieve the pressure? Say you meet this female, y'all at the club, you meet this female, y'all be like, whoo, yo, we both got this Jones, right? So we uh-huh. need the pressure. What's negative about it? I mean, because when you look at sex w- with any other um, entertainment in this world, it's the one that the ratings always stay high on. You know, baseball come and go, football come and go, but sex stays. You know what I mean? It, right, because that's so, because of its power. Sex is very powerful. Okay, let me go back to your to your question. So you meet a girl at the club, and y'all are both, you know, wanting to do it. And so you have sex with, with this person. Now, just in in the idea of what it is, you have sex, there's nothing wrong with that. But what is produced after that is what makes it imbalanced. If you're with someone who you don't know who she is, you don't know what her background is, you don't know what kind of sexual demons she might be dealing with um, or what sexual issues she has, and now you are in this woman. And now this woman, and the same thing goes with her. She doesn't know you. She just met you tonight at the club. And now you're inside of her body. You are inside of her, and everything that is in you is now in her. And for a woman, you know, once you ejaculate and you got that DNA inside of her, that DNA stays with her forever for the rest of her life. So whatever energy comes by that, that is something that now she has to deal with. If it was a one-night stand, you may not have to worry about it no more. You don't got to deal with her. She don't have to deal with you. But both of you individually have to deal with what has come from that from that relationship, from that um, union. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not that there is no judgment in, like, the things that I'm saying and saying, um, you know, the, the, the destruction and all of the things that happen, there's no judgment in that at all. You know, it's not to say that you're a bad person because you you do that or that, you know, that could be a negative thing. Now, let's say same scenario. You meet someone who happens to be extremely balanced and, you know, she got it together and you got it together and you are in a great space, a great state of mind, and it's something that you chose to do. Maybe in the practice you wanted to create something magical for, for both of you, for each other. You know, that's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's a good way to use the sexual energy. But the thing is, is that we're not in that kind of society right now. We're in a society where people are going only by, oh, I got this need, I got this Jones for sex, and I need to do it, I need to get off. You know, and so if that is the only intention and, the, and that's the only thing that a person is seeking, then they're going to be, it's, it's going to be short lived. They're going to be able to experience that in the moment, but then they have to deal with the repercussions of what they created in that moment of bliss without consciousness. You know, so it really has to do with each individual. And that's why when I talk about it, you know, I never want, to, want people to think that I'm judging them based on their decisions. I am the last person to judge anybody. I think judgment is the worst thing that we could do to one another. It's just about really comprehending where we are in the society and in this time where sex has been uh, completely exploited and we have been lied to about it. We have been deceived because of it and through it. So it's important for us to know the truth about it so that we can make better decisions. You know, and it's and when it comes to our healing, and a lot of people they want to heal themselves, they want to heal their chakras, they want to you know have control of their bodies. That is a huge part of your healing. And so when you're when you're just doing it just because you're feeling anxiety, or you feel like you just need to do it. Perhaps the solution is to find out where that anxiety is truly coming from. Because if you're healing, if you're using sex to heal and you're not doing it in a proper way where you're with a person who's worthy of your essence, then you're just creating more destruction, you know, within yourself. And it's you're going to keep, you're going to be on a hamster wheel of sex. You're going to keep going after sex for relief and for healing, but you're not really at the root of the problem. That's just superficially you're feeling that, um, that energy of, of bliss that is really temporary and it starts to lessen. You know, people that have a lot of sex, they'll find that after a while they become 
not so sensitive anymore or they become, you know, they, they need, they require a lot more to get off. They require a lot more to feel satisfied. And that comes from an imbalance within yourself. And so it's easy to use sex to be like, all right, I, I know this is going to feel good, so I'm just going to do it and I'm going to feel good in this moment. But not many people really think about what comes after or what what is really involved when you start, you know, adding sex into your little situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, in a way. But I, I still think y'all make it a little harder, you know what I mean, because it's, if a person in another society didn't believe that that set of, they may never be affected. You know what I mean? What if it was a, a you grew up in a society where sex was never legislated to you as being a monogamous thing between a man and a woman forever? Would they feel the same um, mental anguish about, oh, I'm picking up all this stuff from her and him? Would they feel that? Or would they just feel like, oh, it's an acceptable thing to do or her today, him tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like that. Well, but it's, sometimes it seems like still, coming up under Christian energy. society, they, they legislate things towards a Christian society that, you know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah. That, and that's consciousness. We're talking about energy, and sex is you know, the energy that comes with it, it's going to do what it does. So um, it's not about a person that is in a monogamous relationship and then cheats or whatever. Like that that, that really is not, that. that's up to the individual. And as you said, what they believe. If they believe, hey, in Africa, the, the men have lots of wives, so they're not feeling any psychological um, issues about, you know, going out on their wives or having more than one woman. That's not that's not an issue with them because they don't it, it doesn't really affect them in that way. But the actual act of sex is still going to have some effect if they're with um, with a woman who is not balanced and who has disorders, um, whether it be from sexual abuse or whatever it is. That person is going that energy is going to affect one of them or both of them. Is going to happen because it's just energy. So I'm talking more about the energy of the of sex and what it actually is as opposed to the mindset of whether we think some things are proper or not or um what is the what is the word um um not even so much beneficial but if they think that it's the right thing to do like in honor you know what i mean it's like it's 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 those those are definitely different things so i understand what you what you're saying um but it's more about the actual energy that happens when you engage in sex it is magical, and it is um, it creates cells. It creates in your in your life. So these are the things that there are things that can be created that it doesn't matter what you think. Like you could think, okay, you could believe that um, that a person that you're in your right mind, you have a wife, and now you have this mistress, or you have another wife. You know, and so you're all good with that in your head. But let's say one of these women has a sexual disease. Well, that sexual disease is going to affect you anyway because it has nothing to do with what you believe. You can believe all day long you don't have a sexual disease, but if you have one, then something is going to happen from that. You know, it's going to affect somebody. So that's more along the lines of what I'm talking about. But um, a sexual, psychological sexual abuse and sexual issues are never really look in that way because it's not something that you can physically see like a sexual disease. But sexual disease really comes in many forms, more forms than just a physical uh, a, a, a herpes or gonorrhea or AIDS or anything like that. It's far more than that. So this is just one of the one of the parts of it. But when it comes to um, mindset and what's just and what's right and what's an honor, that really depends on the individual and where their mindset is. And I don't think that that's going to um, affect the energy uh, in a way of making it uh, – more non-productive than it is if there's already something inside that exists that goes deeper than just what a mindset is. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you block yourself from it? Like, Can you say, block yourself from it? Can you mentally bring a, a person to orgasm but block yourself from that energy coming to your body? So oh, there's, there's definitely a way to do that. If you are, um, if you are a sex energy master, a master manipulator, then you can definitely do those things. You can be with someone, and you can protect your energy from what it is that they, what it is that they're bringing. 
you can do that, but it really requires a master to be able to do that. And it has to, um, it's not just about saying, oh, I'm not letting it affect me because I blocked it out. It has to do with a real deep level of consciousness and of awareness of vibration and frequency that you're able to control and manipulate. And, again, it's very difficult because when it comes to, you know, what. Okay, you can block it to a certain level, but again, when it comes to the physical aspect and the the mind liquids are touching your liquids, that has nothing to do with what we believe. That is the element of that physical thing that is happening. And what's that? You know, it's kind of like saying, well, if um if I don't believe that I could get pregnant, I won't get pregnant. Well, that goes to an extent. But your body is going to do what it does, and the sperm and the ovaries and all of those things have functions that they do that cannot be um, controlled simply by a mindset. Does that make sense? Sure. I just okay. That was interesting because I, it, it was a long time ago. Uh, a friend she shared with me that she could sense when her boyfriend slept around, and I, I just wondered about that. And, and the, my assumption was that eventually people can sense other people's energy inside their mate. You know what I mean? Like that. That, that was people my could, could sense. Can you say that again? Yeah, she was just saying that she could tell when her boyfriend slept around because he <laughs> felt different. So I just, uh-huh. and, and, a, and it was a, a lot of females tried to say it was because men change. But as I probed more into certain females, I found out that. They, if you know a person how they feel spiritually, mm-hmm. when they take in other energy sexually, that usually a female can tell. She'll sense that other energy in your male, you know, like that. Mm-hmm. It's very. Oh serious, yeah, she could but. sense it. She could smell it. She could, you know, it's. And again, it depends on the individual and 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 how heightened her senses are. But um, usually, especially if you've been um, with somebody for a long time. And then you have it. They have a sexual encounter with somebody else, and then they have it with you. There's a lot of different ways that you can sense that. Why that is? It could be behaviorally. It could be because the person is acting different. It could be because the person, you know, now has a scent. The scent is different, and you have to be really sensitive to the sense of smell to be able to to notice it um, through that aspect. And it could also be very much just intuition. I have a feeling. You know, I know my mate, and I know, you know, something feels different. Something is different. I, I sense it. So, um, you know, it could be a lot of different things. And, and women have a lot of abilities when it comes to sex, have a lot of power, a lot of, you know, when a, a woman, the way that we're created, the way that our vaginas are, that they're internal, we're constantly taking in energy. We're constantly receiving energy, and we're very sensitive to it. That's why when a woman has her menstrual cycle, there's all of these things, oh, the mood swings and all of these different things that happen. That has to do with all the energy that we're that we've taken in, and now we're purging it out. And intuitive intuitiveness comes with that. Psychic abilities come with that. So it's a lot of things that we are equipped to do, and some of them, some of us do it kind of like by mistake because we're never really taught to do it, or we learn just from instinctually because it is in our nature. But yes, we're highly affected um, because of the way that our makeup is, because of the way that we are created, and being internal beings like we are, we're highly affected and we're highly sensitive when it comes to that. Do you feel like? The sun is evolving your vaginas now. You, you, do you, I mean, like you speak of accepting the energy, and so then y'all can accept energy. Do you think that the sun is evolving? You know, and I say that because when I was young, women weren't skeeting, but that's a diff, something that you can actually see women skeeting when you look at the Parthenon. Do you think that the universe is developing your vaginas to start to produce that being for the future now? Because women are more skeeting, or even though they make it seem like it's a style, it is something that is a part of y'all development to get to that level. You know, which is squirting, skeeting. Do you think that the sun has something to do with that energy? The sun. Yeah. The sun in the sky. Because like, so there's a lot of us that believe that the sun is part of what's helping us to elevate again. You know what uh-huh. I mean? It's more the energy of the sun. Do you think that's affecting the woman? 
wound. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And if a woman wants to heal herself and she wants to heal her root chakra, her sacral and sex chakra, um, one of the things that I also recommend, if you're able to do it, um, take your panties off and do a, 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 a pose with your legs um, spread wide open, allowing the sun to seep through. And that's definitely beneficial for a woman. So um, when you're saying, I'm not sure if I answered the question, but, yeah, I definitely believe that the sun, all of nature is part of our evolution, you know, uh, the moon, the sun, water, earth, the trees, everything that exists in nature is part of us. And so we can use it for our healing. We can use it for our own evolution. Thank you. That was my last question. Thank you. Peace. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I want to get into talking about GMO, genetically modified babies. And I know that sounds strange, but this has to do with what we're creating when we're not in the right state of mind. If you go to a place where the level of consciousness is really low and you have people that are creating at that level of consciousness, then what they produce is low conscious things. And so what's happening now with people that are um, just strictly going off of their carnal instincts, they just want to have sex, they're not looking deeply into it, they're, you know, in abusive relationships, but they're still producing from those relationships, what they are producing is tainted. And nobody wants to hear that because people think, you know, oh, but it's just a baby, it's just a child, everybody has an opportunity and everybody has a, a chance. That's a great thing, and I think that we all want to just believe that, you know, the innocence of a child is, um, you know, supersedes anything else. But when a person... When you're creating life, what is in you, what is, your, 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 your sperm cells have codes in it. And when it goes into a woman's body and when it goes into the ovaries and it starts to produce something, whatever is in you is what's being produced into the embryo, into that child, into that fetus. And so whatever... Um, negative traits, bit of traits, whatever it is, that you, whatever your blueprint is, that's going to go into that child. It's going to go into that fetus. And so that fetus is going to grow up with the elements that you've injected in them, you and the mother. And so what is produced, you know, people wonder why, why they're killers, why they're people that are heartless, why they're people that are like monsters. You know, they have, they're still born through sex, through the encounter. It's still the same, the same process. It's what goes into it that de- defines what's going to be developed. And so when people are not in a great state of mind and they're not healthy and they're having sex and producing, they're also producing unhealthy beings. And when you produce unhealthy beings, and I'm, I just have to give the example of the guy, what was the guy, the um the killer, the cold-blooded killer, um, I, I think that was his name. I, I don't know what it was that they called him, but this person was um, born from rape. He was born from a situation that was already jacked up. So he didn't have all of the elements that he needed to be a uh, uh, a balanced and complete person. There was a lot of things that were missing, and there was nothing that could be done to this individual to um, to to fix it to make it better, to to remedy his situation. That's just the way that he was built. And I believe this person, I can't remember, you know, what his name was, but he ended up um, being killed in jail. But um, these are, that's just an example of what nature produces. Just like in animals, when you have animals that um, produce a, a, a bad batch, you can see that immediately because something is wrong, a leg is missing, or whatever it is. And so that's an example of how they were produced. They were produced in a way that wasn't, um, it wasn't good, it wasn't beneficial, it wasn't healthy, it wasn't normal, you know. And that same thing happens with the human species as well. But, you know, with people having the idea that, well, everybody gets a chance and everybody has some good in them, that's a nice and beautiful thought. But the reality is, is that when you create in a low vibration, you produce in a low vibration. And it's going to be extremely difficult for someone that has been um, created from a low vibration to raise up, to rise up. And that's 
that's just science. That's nature. That's not um, anything that's done through judgment or saying, oh, well, this is what this person deserves. A lot goes into the creation of things and the creation of people. We also live in a society where people don't think about that. People, How many people do you know? in relationships, that before they get into the relationship, they speak about these things. They look at the qualities in the person that they're with so that they they can create um, something productive, something beneficial for the planet. Not too often. Now, the the bloodline, they they took it to a whole other extreme. But that's what these bloodlines, where we talk about the Rothschilds and the, um, the, the, the who? The Rockefellers and all those people, the people, the the reptilians that, you know, inbreed so that they could keep their bloodline pure. That's part of, they're using sex magic. They're using this sexual power to create and to stay in power, you know, and they're using it in a really jacked up way, but that's still what they're doing. And so before, and in other cultures, when they're um, marrying, you know, when they do these arranged marriages, they make sure that the person has all of the elements that are necessary for success for the, for, for, for these families, you know, so they're paying attention to what they're bringing together because they recognize the power of creation and what happens when you um, bring a man and a woman into union, what can be created, what can be manifested. When horses, you're breeding a horse. You're getting, you know, the the fastest horse with another fast horse or whatever the formula is to get a great, you know, running horse. You know, those things have to be in place before you put these these um these two elements together to create and reproduce. You know, when you have what is it with the dogs? With the dogs, you want to get a um what is it that they call the dogs the uh, a stud and and have like this breed this uh, elite breed a uh, purebred dog. Yeah, purebred dogs, they have to pay attention to the breed of that dog. If you have a dog, you know, that's a pit bull, and then you got a a chihuahua, then you're messing up the breed, you know. And so the same thing applies with all of nature. When you're you're creating, uh, when you have marijuana and you got a hybrid plant of marijuana, you mixed it with something else to create something. So all of these formulas of evolution exist, you know, and, and nature uses it all the time, but we don't. We don't use it because we don't value ourselves enough to be like, let me hold on a second before I give up my coochie to somebody. Let me see what this person is about, what it is that they're bringing, what quality, you know, this person has within them, and what qualities do I have that is going to make a a, a productive human out of the whole situation, a productive situation. People don't do that. We we go based off of, oh, well, I fell in love. Oh, well, this man is fine. Oh, she looked good. Oh, I, you know, I know I'm going to have some good-looking kids with this person. You know, these are the things that we have been reduced to. Nobody's really paying attention to the science of creation because we don't – And it, I mean, it's not – it's not even about blaming anybody. I mean, the powers that be have taken all of the knowledge and have hoarded it and use it for themselves so that they can control us, and they don't tell us yet, you know. And so we're left thinking, you know, fending for ourselves and going by our feelings, going by our emotions, always acting on emotion, you know. So it's like when people are acting on emotion, they're not being logical. They're not being smart. They're going by a feeling, whether it be an emotion of anger or whether it be an emotion of lust, if you allow yourself to be driven simply by that emotion, you can cause a lot of havoc in your life because you're not thinking logically. You're not thinking productively. You're thinking emotionally. You're thinking about the satisfaction that you're going to have in a moment or what it is that you want because in that moment you feel like you want it without giving it any thought to how productive it will be for your life. You know, so this is something that, that – you know, has gone on and on and on, and it's time for us to start dissecting these things and looking at how we can make things better within our own space. And, again, this is not about judgment. Judgment has nothing to do with it. You know, everybody can do whatever they want, but trust and believe if you have a person over here who's who's acting consciously and being mindful of their actions and being aware of their power and, and having reverence for it, respecting it, you know, they're, you're going to have a better production from these individuals over here than these individuals over here who are just doing whatever the hell and they're just acting on emotion and they're just fucking because that's basically what it comes back down to. They're, they're getting satisfaction and feeling good about what it is that they're putting out. You're definitely going to have a, a completely different production from this person than you are from a person who's conscious. 
And that's just science. That's physics. That's just universal law. That's how it works. We're going to go back to the phone line, see if anybody has any comments or questions. I'm probably going to do, if we don't get um, any more comments or questions or any more interaction, then we're probably just going to keep it for an hour and a half instead of two hours. My voice is starting to go. It's always helpful when you guys could um, communicate and kind of interact so that we can make this more uh, productive for everybody. Um, so back yeah, to the phone line, 646-929-0691. Do we have a caller on the line? Yeah, we have, we're taking a call now, uh, 917-519. You're on live. Are you there? 917-519. Yes, I am. Good evening. Yes, I am. I am uh, calling you from Greenville, South Carolina. My name is Tony. I would just like to say thank you for the goddess online and the knowledge that she's bringing. It is very needed today, and I honor and respect you tremendously. This knowledge is very needed. So uh, I thank you very much of you exposing this knowledge of people need to understand, understand, and even overstand that there is energy and that we can reproduce things through the sexual energy. That's one of the most powerful energies, if not the most powerful energy in the universe, that organic mm-hmm. energy. So I'm very grateful and uh, thankful for you, sister, so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, and you're very welcome. It is my honor, Tony. Um, so how how long have you been aware of what this energy is in your own life? When did you start paying attention to it? Uh, well, there is a sister that I came across in my life about maybe about seven, eight years ago, uh, Sister Juanita. You may be aware that's uh, Galactic Soul, <laughs> if I could say her name, Galactic Soul. Uh, she mm-hmm. was like a very big sister to me and was very instrumental uh, in teaching me these higher levels of knowledge. And many of us are in the dark with this type of uh, knowledge because we need to be very cautious who we reproduce ourselves with because we can produce uh, children that we can't understand why their behavior is is so contrary maybe to yours uh, because of the energy of, the other person or even their experiences, even your energies in the past uh, ancestry. Uh, And Mm -hmm. we need to build, yes, absolutely. We need to build our energies and frequencies up uh, with the proper knowledge that you're giving to us uh, so that we can get the best benefits in today's time because the media and the so-called powers that be do exploit the sex energy, and they make it very uh, desensitized where you can, you're can you confused. Mm-hmm. You're completely confused, and we really need to be uh, knowledgeable about the science, about nature, about uh, that when we begin to mix these energies and these uh, liquids, that things are going to happen <laughs> no matter mm-hmm. what because it is nature. So yes. uh, just continue to give out the word and the knowledge. We we are so ignorant today. We need the filling of the truth and the accuracy of ancient knowledge. Uh, and religion can cause a lot of disruptions and guiltiness and oh, yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, it really causes confusion. But uh, for those of us who are tapped into the creator and the universe, uh, you're going to get this truth some way or another, and it will be exposed like you being a witness of that this evening. So thank you once again. You're very welcome, Tony. Um, yeah, it's really interesting because when we, you know, religion was created for that. Re- religion was created to keep us in line, to keep us in control. 
And I'm just really happy that people are waking up to this information and what it is and not being afraid to explore it. Um, because, it's, again, it's not about it being wrong. It's not about um, uh, it's not about the judgment of it. It's about just, you know, getting the science right and learning about it so that you can have a better life, you know, because it's like the, the awareness of sexual energy and how it works in our lives will definitely enhance our lives once we are conscious of what it is that we're doing and how it is that we're using this energy. And it's important to pass this information on to our seeds because, you know, they come after us. And what, what we're experiencing now is a lot of people that are just copying television. They're, they're doing uh, what they see on the Internet, what they're, what they're seeing in the media. And so uh, we definitely have to kind of bring that back and not worry about the people that don't get it because trust and believe there's going to be a lot of people that don't. There are a lot of people that really enjoy sleep. They they like being uh, in this matrix and, you know, uh, to them, enjoy your slumber. But um, for those of us that are ready to take action on the things that are going on, and uh, specifically when it comes to this energy, we just got to go for it. I, I never thought that I would be talking about what I'm talking about right now. I never wanted to. Um, this was something that in my life, just dealing with my own sexual energy and um, my sexual issues, that was something that I felt that as an adult I, I would deal with it by myself and, you know, I'd get over the things that I go get over and that's it, that's all. You know, five years ago, Spirit said, no, there's something more that you have to do with this. And so I started going deeply into my own healing and the information started coming strictly through me, you know, as I started to uncover things, more information came and then I started to study and I thought that the information that I was, um, that I was receiving coincided with uh, the studies that have been done and the rituals and, you know, the sacred knowledge that just goes on and on forever. It never dies. And so I'm just happy to be able to be a conduit to this information because it is important, you know, and um, sex energy goddess or Tina is funny because I know that uh, Usiku would have a, a hard time with saying sex energy goddess 13 because he didn't want me to be perceived as just the, you know, somebody that, does porn or whatever it is that people think about when they see the word sex. But I, I, I believe that, you know, at this point in our relationship, he understands and recognizes that it's far more than the sexual act. It's far more than um, than a physical thing. It is about uh, creation. It is about who we are. And it's about everything that exists because everything that has life is sexual energy. It is the foundation for everything. Um, I do have, I've, I've dedicated my life to teaching about sexual energy in various forms, be it through organ energy, which is a form of sexual energy, or through the physical, mental aspects of sex and physical sex, although I don't, I don't teach sex magic. I don't think that um, anybody that has come through my school has been at that level to where they're ready to start creating on the level of conscious sexual magic, because we're, we're all in the healing process right now. But it is something that exists, and I do recommend for people to research it because, again, you're doing it all the time anyway. Um, at some point in my career, it will be something that I'll be teaching more, but we have to get the people ready for that first, you know. And so the best thing that I can do is give people the information and make them aware of themselves and help them unleash their power so that they can know that they are the master of their reality. They're the ones that control it. And so once you get that in balance and get that in order, then you can start really having fun with it and creating with it. Because I, I don't want people to feel that, you know, sex is this, oh, i got to be scared of it. You, you want to be cautious of it and you want to respect it. But it is something that's to be enjoyed. And, you know, and you enjoy it even more when you know that you are creating something magnificent, when you're consciously creating something beautiful, something that's going to be beneficial for the planet. It feels a whole lot better. I do my classes at the Oregon Energy Self-Healing Center, and you can reach me there at OregonEnergySelfHealing.com. I have a private study group that I do there, and in the study group, we learn about chakras, we learn about our subtle bodies, we learn about sex and sexuality, the things that I'm talking about tonight. We go deeper into it. Uh, we do, I do healing sessions every week. And I also offer them private as well. And um, 
the Oregon Energy Self Healing Center is something that we're working on manifesting it to be an actual physical place. Right now it's online, it's on the Internet. And so our lives work now, uh, my husband and I, uh, we're working on creating the Oregon Energy Self Healing Center and Infinity Academy where um, all of these things are going to be taught. And all of the, the ancient sciences and uh, all of the secrets and, and the rituals and uh, the formulas of life are going to be taught there. So if you're interested in supporting that venture, you can go to GoFundMe.com forward slash S-E-G, and you can find out more about the project and make a donation. Um, do we have anybody else on the line, 646-929-0691? We're on the Ringing Stone Network tonight. JL, is there anyone else that wants to speak? I have two more questions, man. Go ahead. Sure. One, um, do you think that the universe is manipulating DNA? You had mentioned earlier about um, us understanding each other's person's DNA for who you mate with. Do you think that the the universe is manipulating DNA to start to produce the being in our cult necessary for the shift after the 26,000 years? And Absolutely. the other question is, um, what's a little tip you can give somebody of what type of organ generator they need to have in their room to enhance their sexual activity? Okay. The first, the first question is, we're absolutely being manipulated, and we're ma- being manipulated in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways that we're being manipulated and um, is shifting and changing our DNA is through chemtrails, is through processed foods, is through um, uh, fluoride in the water, uh, toxic digital pollution. All of that is affecting us. It's affecting our brains. It's affecting our cells. It's affecting everything in our body. Um, so um, smart meters, smart meters in your home that are constantly, uh, you know, emitting energy, toxic energy, um, radioactivity. So that's definitely happening, and that's changing us all the way around. And um, in order for you to have a beneficial experience, just period, um, whether inside or out, is um, organ energy batteries. And what organ energy batteries are, it's a natural source of energy. It's crystals, metals and resin, inorganic and organic materials. And when you put those things together, you create scalar waves that protect you from radiation, pollution, negative energy. And when you use the elements of the crystals, you're starting to get into another power of uh, metaphysical energy, metaphysical healing energy that will help a person's condition um, and helps them heal and um, and regenerate and uh, balance out all of the chakras in the body. So if a person is wanting to work on their root, sacral, and sexual chakras, then they want to get stones that are for those specific areas. And so one that I could recommend right away is carnelian. Carnelian is a stone for creativity. It's for your sacral chakra. It is going to help you heal that energy. And crystals and stones work. It's a, it's a slow process of healing because some people think, that they'll get them and immediately tomorrow, you know, they feel better or they feel different. It really depends on your sensitivity. It depends on um, how how much toxicity you have within you. Uh, the, le- the less toxic, toxic you are, the more sensitive you are to certain energies. But carnelian is a great stone. Another stone that I recommend for sexual energy and giving love to yourself and healing sexual abuse issues is a stone called road acrocyte. Rhodochrosite is a stone that emits self-love. It helps you to be able to love yourself, and it helps you to be able to deal with the issues that come from sexual abuse. Um, It helps you face them without having to deal with so much trauma. So that's a good stone. Another stone that's really valuable and powerful is black tremoline, and that's a grounding stone, and it's a, a stone for the root chakra. And what I love about this stone is that any negative energy that comes to you, it transforms it and sends it back to its source. So when you put these elements inside of an organ energy battery or an organ device, it's going to have amplified power. So you're able to place it in any room or place it on your person, and you can know that you're going to be protected from this energy. It starts healing from the inside out. So anything that's within you and anything that's outside in your space is going to be cleared of any toxic 
negative energy. Um, if you are interested in being connected to a piece, the way that I work with people, I don't have my pieces on Etsy. I do have a gallery at the Oregon Energy Self Healing Center, but these are functional uh, feeling, functional healing art pieces that I create. They're all one of a kind. And I connect people with what it is that they need. So I offer consultations that will help you get to the root of what it is that needs um, that needs adjusting in your body. And then I'll connect you to a piece that's going to be beneficial for the work that it is that you're wanting to do. Um, organ energy also does heighten the sexual experience for people as well. Um, if you have organ, if you're if you are having sex in a room that is full of organ energy, you are diminishing the possibility of sexual, uh, of negative energy penetrating your aura, penetrating the other person's aura. So it clears the space. So I don't like to just recommend, oh, just, you know, put a bunch of organ energy batteries in your room and, you know, do it all day long and you don't have to worry about nothing else. Because it's not, you know, I, I just don't think that that would be really responsible because the key is you don't want to rely on the tools. You are the tool. So you want to rely on yourself and you want to use the tools to enhance your experience at whatever level. But if a person wanted to use uh, the organ energy just to have a more pleasurable experience when it comes to sex, it will definitely work in that respect as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Well, my my You're question welcome. about the DNA is, for instance, I have a friend. Um, she's pregnant now. And uh-huh. she doesn't really know the father, you know what I mean? And and so and she's having an extremely tough time bringing this little boy in. And so I've been kind of telling her that maybe she should go learn the guy's DNA, so she get an understanding of of what what the universe has manipulated to bring in her body, which is a mix of her DNA with his, that may mm-hmm. be designed specifically for you know while we're going through this earth change. For instance, like with mm-hmm. my daughter, me and her mother, they've never been together, but they put it together long enough to produce a child that's telepathic mm-hmm. to it, I'm saying. And that's what I meant. Mm-hmm. I believe that it's happening more and more and more. Even though it looks like it's reckless abandonment, out of that chaos the universe is putting together, it's almost like how they mixed us up in slavery. It kind of made us stronger than the other strains in, around the world of, of of Moors or Blacks or however you want to put us, you know, that just made it all within, like you can see Somalis and Ethiopians and you see the similarities. And when you come to America, we're all mixed up. But mm-hmm. when you look at our spiritual gifts, and you look at once we start waking the ramifications of change starts in America, even with the mm-hmm. South Africans started. So that's what I'm saying. Do you think that mixing is purposeful, where we might end up producing children or beings that are, collectively more powerful than the rest of the world soon for as we move into the the age of Aquarius. Absolutely. I think that and I and I'm glad that you brought that up because I want people to also recognize that um there are no mistakes. You know, everything happens for a reason and um just because you had a one night stand and you produce a child it doesn't mean that your child is doomed. You know, there there are things that we need to look at um, when it comes to situations like that. And let's say you, you had a child out of a one-night stand, somebody that you didn't really know. There are still ways to deal with that situation. First of all, when that child, even before that child comes in, like with your friend who's pregnant, she could start doing work with organ energy. She could start doing work with her chakras and start really creating a better space a more productive space for that child that's coming. And when that child arrives, it's important to show that child about, well, before that the child even knows, to do crystal cleansings, to do, um, you know, energetic work on that child and really give them love, give them a lot of love and know that, you know, it, it's not about, oh, I, I made a mistake and now my child is a mistake and different things like that. Everything is an, op- an opportunity for us to evolve. So when I speak, I speak about the things that are occurring, and I speak about conditions, and I things are. But everything, there is remedy, and and I know that I talked about the guy that you know, you know that was killing people and ended up getting killed. That's like a real extreme situation, and unfortunately, when um, people produce out of situations like rape, it is really challenging. 
but it's not to say that that situation cannot be transformed. Energy, we are energy, and energy is always transforming. And we're and when we're able to, when we have the knowledge, we're able to manipulate it, and we're able to make negative energy productive. That's just what black tourmaline does. So, if you have a, a child worst case scenario that comes from, you know, a rape situation. It is really important for you to do the work on yourself and it is important for you to do the work on that child and to really address the issues that come with a situation like that so that you can dissolve them, so that you can transform them. Um, but to answer your question, is the, are, are these beings coming together to serve a greater purpose? Absolutely 100% yes, because there are souls that are constantly incarnating. And these souls that are incarnating, they're not brand new. Like your baby girl, she's not new. You know, she's been here before, and she chose this path to come through her mother by way of you. You know what I mean? So that was a choice that she made with the creator. You know, and it's like she's not aware of it or conscious of it at this point, but at some level in her existence, she's going to be conscious and aware of why she came and, you know, why she came in the way that she did. You know, it's like everybody comes in through their own unique situation, but nobody is brand new. Energy is always evolving. So we keep coming back over and over. So whatever lesson a person needs, um, in their lifetime, they're going to come into that experience so that they can heal from that and so that they can evolve, you know. So let's say a person, let's say in, in, in one lifetime, you know, I was just really in a, I, I didn't experience love and I didn't, you know, I had a really hard time. I needed to come into this lifetime now to experience what love is or what love is not. So I come into an experience that is going to challenge those areas of me so that I can evolve through it. And that will make me a dynamic person if I can get through that challenge and evolve from it. So every soul being on the planet has an opportunity to expand and evolve. But we all come with different challenges, and some of those challenges are really jacked up. And in the space that we are in now, there are some beings that are being produced, like what I call the GMO babies. They're not even real. They're not even, they're they're coming from such a low vibration that they're coming in from a whole nother source because creation is is creation. And just because somebody is considered bad or a demon or a devil, it doesn't mean that a devil can't create. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like everything has its place and it's about bringing it balanced. And it's not to say that oh, this one way, you know, because people are having uh, sex in a bad vibration, then nothing is ever, ever going to be right. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that challenges come with that. So you're going to have to do a little more to get to, you know, a place of balance, a place of, you know, evolution where you're feeling good. Um, So that's not, everybody has a different path. You know, um, but I by no means want anybody to think that because they're from uh, uh, a challenging situation that that is the end of their life or that there's no hope for them to be better beings, you know. So um, I believe that there a lot of star seeds, a lot of indigos, a lot of um, a lot of those beings come by way of kind of destructive relationships and, and you know, families that are not so good. You know, the, the, the best people, the most, the most um, wonderful people on the planet have come by way of really, you know, not so good situations. So hopefully that answered your question. Yes, it, it definitely did. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, hopefully I'm not trying to be negative. I just was, you know, it was some, some points that I want to answer by you so I could get them resolved in my mind. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I think it's important to always ask, always ask, always inquire, always discover. And there's no, you know, because the truth definitely doesn't need to be defended. You know, when you start, you know, when people think that they know something, but then they don't want to answer certain questions or they feel like, you know, what you're saying is going against what they're saying, you know, it's crazy. It's about putting all the information out there and people are going to feel the truth. And we have to be able to accept ideas, you know, from other people and other, because this is a whole new concept for a lot of people right now. So where would we be if a person wasn't able to just really express where they are because of fear of how they're going to be perceived? So I'm glad that, you know, you're asking questions and no question is a bad or wrong question. And um, I'm not the creator of the information that I'm sharing. This is ancient information that has existed since the beginning of time. I am simply the messenger. 
Do we have anyone else on the line that wants to ask or make any comments? Going on now, media, social media has made it really accessible for us to get information. And one of the things that would always bother me is um, the way that women are promoting women to be these sexual creatures, these sexual goddesses. I mean, it's all good in the sense of what it is, but when we are um, encouraging women to use that energy um, and to be so free with it uh, without any kind of responsibility, it causes a lot of damage. Like, you know, people that have gotten into, there's a lot of people that haven't faced their demons, that haven't really looked at their issues, that are using sex to heal. And it it could be really um, deceiving because, like I said, the energy of sex and the feeling of sex is a good one. So it makes you think that things are right. And you have to go deeper to recognize, you know, what the what the flaws are or what what it is that needs to be transformed, what it is that needs to be changed. But we have to be really careful with um, this whole, this new generation of sexual freedom and what that is and what that means because there's a lot of deception out there, you know, and women feel that there is power in their sexuality and, and with them being free with their sexuality. And there is power in it, but it has to be done in the right context. And so that was on my mind, so I wanted to go ahead and share that. And I also want to share um, for the men that you holding on and being, um, you know, being mindful of your energy spreading, like you being able to say no is powerful. You being able to control your manhood is very powerful. And, you know, we, we are coming into a time, I do have a lot of clients that are practicing celibacy, and I encourage celibacy for some point of your life. And so if you've been sexually active your whole life, there is some point where you must practice celibacy in order for you to get clarity of where you are in that respect. And with that clarity, a lot of mind change could happen. You know, there's some people that feel that they're really, you know, free with their sex, they're completely healthy, and then when they stop and they become celibate for a while, they get some clarity that they never thought that they would have. Things will come up that they never even knew existed. And when it comes to our healing, it's important for us to give that to ourselves. And it is really a great thing when you could um, be so loving of yourself, so uh, respectful of yourself that you don't just give it away. You know, and this is not, again, it's not about judgment, being like, oh, you a hoe because you, you know, giving your stuff away. It's more about how you feel about yourself. You know, and a lot of people that do give themselves away are doing it because there's something lacking on the inside. And not everybody, not everybody is doing it, you know, for that reason, but the majority, that's really what it is. Um, you want to look at yourself as you would look at your offspring. You know, I know that for um, my offspring, I've always taught them, you know, I used to be kind of afraid of, okay, what am I going to tell them about sex? Because I grew up with the whole, you don't have sex until you're married, you know, you only do it with your husband, you know, that whole situation. And I obviously didn't wait until marriage before I experienced that. So I felt like, you know, I I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to say something to my kids that I know that they're going to experience something different. So what I taught them was the responsibility of what sex is and what it means when you give yourself to somebody and what that entails and what responsibility it brings. And it's more than just the responsibility of, oh, you don't want to get a disease or you don't want to have a baby, which seems to be the, the little scare tactic that we use on our kids now. Oh, you don't want to get pregnant. But it's, there's so much more than just getting pregnant. It's so much more than a, than, a, than a sexually transmitted disease. And I think that once we give them that information, then we give them the power. We give them the knowledge of, of how they are to conduct themselves, you know, and we give them the ability to kind of look in deeper um, before they make moves like that. And so I'm saying all of that to say that when you do that, when you care enough about your offspring and the people that you're bringing up into the world to give them that information, you want to also use it on yourself. You know, so you want to treat yourself as you would your child. You know, you want to look after yourself as you would your child. You know, if you, and not to say that a one night stand is a horrible thing because there's been, you know, worse things that happen, but if that's something that you wouldn't recommend for somebody that you love, why would you do it yourself? You know, and it's not enough to say, oh, well, I'm an adult, so it's different. 
Because when it comes to the sexual energy, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter who you are. It just is. So you want to start looking at it in a way of, of protection or protecting yourself and loving yourself enough to give yourself the very best of every experience. And sex alone just doesn't cut it. I mean, I've been there, had the best sex in the world. And it's not just about, there's so much more to it. And I never thought that I would say that because there was a time in my life where sex was everything, the all and be, end all and be all. And it's like, you know, I was concerned about the satisfaction when I finally was able to to attain or achieve, you know, orgasm, which was late in my life. You know, it's like I was able to, um, you know, it was, it drove me to just that. I just wanted to do that. I just wanted to have that feeling. It was the best feeling in the world. And then I stopped. I stopped doing it, period. And then I started learning more about me and who I am. And then I started experiencing different things that I could bring along into sexual experiences. And so it's now a completely different thing than it used to be for so many reasons, you know. And now I use it in my life, whether I'm being active in it um, sexually or whether I'm just using that energy in my life to create other things. When I'm creating my um, organ energy batteries, I'm using my sexual energy to create that. When I'm painting a picture, when I'm singing a song, when I'm doing a dance, you know, I'm using my sexual energy for those things and I'm being productive and I'm enjoying my sexual energy a lot more than I did when I was unaware of what it was that I was doing, when I was unaware of who I am. So the the ecstasy that you can feel uh, when you have full knowledge and when you're balanced is indescribable. And, you know, the cool thing about it is, is that it's not something that you will only feel when you're in the act of sex. It's a feeling that you can generate without the physical aspect of sex. And that's what's so powerful about this, because since we are sexual beings, these are the things that we could do on our own. These are things that we can do on our own. And when we come in balance with a person, that makes the experience a thousand times better. And it makes it so much better that it gets to a point where, you may not even have to do it physically at all. I know to some of y'all that sounds crazy. It's like, oh, yeah, she crazy. But no, really, it does. You have to be a witness to it for yourself, though. You know, I, I'm not going to say, oh, do this, and you're going to, you know, it, it, it's a journey that you have to take on your own. You have to experience it on your own. You have to look on your own. You have to heal on your own. And, you know, that's one of the things that um, that I share the most, that I'm, it's like the biggest message that I have for people is that you find your way to heal yourself because you have the power to do it and everything else is going to come because maybe your life is not um, a life that causes for you to be so sexually active or so um, sexually expressive. And that's okay. Maybe that maybe that's just not your thing. And it's not to say that you're not using your sexual energy. You're just not using it like other people. So my whole thing is for you to be able to find out how that, system works within you? How does your sexual energy work? How is it that you can use it to make a better life for yourself? Because truly, that's what it's for. It's really for more than just producing children. You know, you can produce any idea, any intention that you have with sexual energy and sex. So it's important that we start using it because we can build nations, create nations, and maintain our lives through this energy. So it's important that we know it. And I'm glad that I'm able to bring this information to you today. I'm going to go back to the lines one more time before we start shutting down. Um, 646-929-0691 is the number to dial. Press 1 if you have a question or a comment. JL, do we have anybody on the line? Yeah, we have one taking a call from uh, 303-601. You're live with me. Hi, Shay, sis. It's Bryce Sister. I say, how are you? Hi, Queen. How you doing? I'm doing good. You know, sitting up here resting his foot and healing. <laughs> good, good, good. But I do have actually a question. I posted it on Facebook, but I figure you can't. You ain't looking at no Facebook right now. You answering questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, like the energies that you were talking about earlier, you know, that you can pick up from. Uh, previous, uh, partners and things like that. Now, my question is, what is the best way of clearing those energies, um, so, you know, before you 
proceed on to a you know a new relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm. You know what's the best yeah. way, in your opinion, to clear those energies. Okay, there's lots of different ways that you can clear the energies. I spoke about one um, before that when Siku asked about the sun. Um, you can go and put your your vagina out open to the sun and receive the energy of the sun and consciously clear out any negative energy that's within you. That's one way. You can also do it with water. And what I recommend is, you know, like some people douche, I don't recommend a douche. I, I recommend a douche with just water, with like um, distilled water, spring water. And then when you clear that energy out of there, you want to consciously release any negative energy that is within you. And then there's another, um, and these are all obviously free methods. Then there's another mm-hmm. method that you can use, and that's a yoni egg. A yoni egg is an egg, um, is a crystal a stone shaped in the way of an egg and there's different sizes to it and you put it inside of your vagina and you do cable exercises. You squeeze the egg and when you're squeezing it with your vaginal muscles, you're releasing energy and you do a, um, a, a breathing series as well. So when you're squeezing, you breathe in through your nose. When you release out through your mouth, you still keep the, that cable muscle working and you're squeezing it, but you're breathing out the air and you're breathing out the negative energy of anything that has been inside of you. And that's, um, it's an excellent, excellent way to clear out negative energy that's within. Also, the things that you're putting into your body, the processed foods, sugar, get rid of sugar, get rid of anything that's not good for your body because those things create parasites that feed off of negative energy that's already inside of us. Um, So, yeah, I would recommend the yoni egg, water, or the sun. Mm -hmm. Sounds wonderful. Now I know what the yoni egg is for. I've seen that on Facebook. I'm like, what's that for? What you, what, huh? But yeah, okay. and there's different ones. There's different, like, you know, you can get a black tourmaline. You can get crystal quartz is a cool one to get because crystal quartz clears all the chakras, all energy, It's it, and it amplifies energy. And then oh. um, rhodochrosite is a good one to get if you are dealing with sexual trauma and things like that. So, you know, the different stones have different metaphysical healing properties. So if there's a particular stone that you feel like, okay, I want to heal my my sexual energy, but I also want to enhance my creativity, then I would get um, a carnelian yoni egg. You know, so depending on the energy that you want to work with as you're healing, that's the kind of egg that you want to get. Awesome answer, sis. Thank you. You're you're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. I love you, guys. Love much. you. Yes. <laughs> Your presentation was beautiful, though. Um, I had a personal question myself, but I don't know if we have enough time to go into it. Um, go ahead. You know, I would go just, for it. All right. Uh, just to let you know, Sunday shows is uh, remedies that work. So you know, people want to tune into that. Uh, my question was. With sexual energy, what does purpose serves and how that is directed? Like, like I I, I had a epiphany that um, having a purpose when having sexual relations or conceiving a child, um, you know, like a plan on where the children will be directed, pretty much um, could be a guideline in that, but but having that as a directive when having that sexual act or with that person should be in the forefront. Does that? Do, are you familiar with that type of uh, pattern? I, I, I heard I'm very familiar breathing, with that. But, okay. Yeah, that's that's sex magic. That's when you are consciously creating. That's when you are intending what it is that you want to manifest with your sexual act. So you know what you do is when you are with your significant other. You are, this is something that, first of all, it has to be rooted from your subconscious. So let's say, you know, you wanting to have a child, that's not coming from just, you know, one day I just decided I wanted to have a child. This is something that you're thinking about, you're, you know, you're with your partner. This is something that you want to do together. So it's already in there. And so when you start practicing the act and you start um, wanting to manifest it, you having the intention and her having the intention is going to amplify this power, this energy that's already existing. Whenever you're conscious of energy, it magnifies it, it amplifies it. So whatever it is that you want to manifest when you are intending that in your sexual relation, if you align with that intention, you're going to make it manifest faster. Because some people think, oh, well, I want a million dollars, so 
baby, think about a million dollars and we're going to do it. And then, you know, we're going to ask you it up. You know, when you get that orgasm, we're going to have this million dollars. It's not really that simple because you have to be aligned with the frequency of what it is that you want to manifest. So if you align yourself with the intention, then that will make it happen. If you, um, if you are not aligned with it, then it's not going to happen or it will take a long time for it to happen if you're just constantly having sex and thinking of this million dollars. Um, if you don't believe it, that you are worthy of that and that you can align yourself with that, then it's kind of like it's, the sex is not really going to work that well for it because what's going to happen is the sex energy is just going to resort what's in your subconscious, what's vibrating the most, what's vibrating the loudest in you. Now, if you're a person who is easily um, aligned with wealth, you know, it's going to be easy for you to be like, you know, because you already live in it. You already feel wealthy. You already, you know, that that's a natural thing for you. But now you just want to manifest a little more for this particular project or whatever. Then in that case, it's going to be a lot easier for you to manifest that intention because you're already in alignment with that energy. And so the sex and the orgasm and that power is going to amplify that and that's going to bring it to you faster. Um, but when it comes to as far as procreating life, there's definitely, you can think of the the sex that you want the child to be, the different positions that you can get to make that happen. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can use and manipulate this energy to get what it is that you want. But, yeah, that's something that's very real. And, again, even if you're not ha saying anything and you're having sex with your partner, you are still manifesting something. So when you're speaking on it and you are alert and aware and in unison of what it is that you're wanting to create, you just make it more powerful. Okay. Okay. All right, sister. Thank you very much for that. That 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 took you're me to a whole nother level with that. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I invite all of you if you want to continue the conversations about sexual energy and sexual healing to come to what I call my house, the Oregon Energy self-healing center at OregonEnergySelfHealing.com. If you are interested in an Oregon Energy battery, um, mention Master Vibe, Master Vibe Kit or just mention the Ringing Stone Network that you heard me on the Ringing Stone Network and you will get um, a special gift for ordering from me uh, from the OregonEnergyBatteries.com. And you can reach me directly at 818-233-5776. No phone calls, please, only text. And um, if you're interested in getting a consultation, if you're interested in joining the study group, the study group is $13 a month. It is an ongoing group, and this group is about your self-healing. In the group, I have private seminars and private lectures that go on. There are private blogs and videos that all pertain to your self-healing. There are assignments in the group. I have writing assignments. Um, it's nothing that you have to turn in. It's just something that you have to do for yourself and weekly healing sessions. So if you're interested in getting involved in that, you're more than welcome to come to OregonEnergySelfHealing.com. I will be back on the Ringing Stone Network in March um, on every third Friday, I believe it is. Yes, every third Friday of the month. So I will be back and we will be talking more about uh, sexual energy, Oregon energy, and whatever is whatever else needs to come up at that time for our talk. Um, if you have any suggestions of anything that you would like for me to cover, um, you can also text me, 818-233-5776. Thank you all so much for being with me tonight. Thank you so much, Usiku, uh, JL. It was a pleasure having you as an engineer tonight. I appreciate you. I appreciate the network. And you guys are all in my intentions. Ashe, hasta la próxima. Adios. All right, sister, peace.